Hi everybody, Andrew Cuneo here. The arena qualifier is coming up this weekend. It's going to be Explorer. And I've been trying a variety of decks. This deck, which I'll get into a, in a second, is something I tried is just kind of a brew. And I'm going to say in advance that if you're looking for a deck to actually do well in the arena qualifier, don't try this one. This is more under the, uh, the category of I tried this so you don't have to. Or if you think it'd be fun, you can, you know, of course, play it on the ladder. So I started out, I wanted to make a deck, like a, some sort of humans collected company deck. And as I was looking through all of the creatures that are legal in Explorer now, we, we've got the, the most recent edition, Thraven Inspector, which is kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to try this. I realized that a ton of them are actually soldiers. Like most of the ones I wanted to play were all were soldiers, so I thought, well, maybe I should just play like a human soldier hybrid. Uh, take the standard soldiers deck and add, you know, some cards that aren't standard legal and try it like that. So if you look at my creatures, the only everybody's a soldier. The only person who's not a human is Valiant Veteran, which is just a really, really great soldier lord. So he fits in my soldier deck. Um, so, like, tribally it makes sense to do this. So then the question is, I mean, does it make sense, like, is this a good collection of cards to be playing? And so th there were a couple of things that appealed to me about this. First of all, Denic, the cards in graveyards can't be the target of spells or abilities, gives you a, a, something that stops Grease Fang, which is pretty nice. And somewhat not quite as strongly, Thalia also makes it so that the very good Grease Fang turn of Grease Fang get back Parhelion number two, crew it and attack you doesn't work because the Grease Fang comes into play tapped, so it gets back the Parhelion and it just goes back into their hand. They can't attack with it. So if they don't have anything else going on, Thalia also breaks that up. So I thought that would be nice. The other thing that I was concerned about with this deck was how do you beat a cat oven mayhem devil kind of deck? Because I thought that might also be popular in Pioneer. And if you're just like a, a white weenie, white green humans deck, only trying to attack on the ground, it's it's almost impossible to win in those circumstances, I would say. So the fact that the blue cards, we've got Sky Strike Officer, you know, flying, pretty big deal. Also got one Harbin that can give your whole team flying. So just the ability to fly over the cat oven, I thought that might be uh, enough to you know make it a reasonable matchup. My experience from playing the matchup was it still isn't enough because as soon, if they have cat oven going on, it, it's you know the game takes a long time from that point for you. And as soon as they draw a mayhem devil, you just you lose your whole board, basically. So it, it really didn't do enough to help that matchup. Uh, but. Those were that was kind of the 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 idea behind the deck. So let's go over a couple of the other interesting cards. So you do have eight good human soldier one drops, which is pretty nice. And then I thought the third best one was Law Rune Enforcer. Um, there there's the the one one artifact guy with unearth, I think is what it's called, that is played in standard. I thought that one just didn't seem particularly good. I thought that this guy, you know, the, the tapping ability on this is actually somewhat strong. Uh, people do play more expensive cards in Explorer. So, you know, being able to tap two drops and higher is pretty nice, actually. Uh, I've got three of this Thalia and two of the other Thalia, which is pretty cool. You can get both Thalias in play. Um, and then it... Thalia's Lieutenant is like kind of the, the whole reason to keep trying this, this human stack because the good Thalia's Lieutenant draws are so good. Uh, and then we've got Siege Veteran, which it's okay. I don't it, it It's probably a downgrade going from Luminarch Aspirant to Siege Veteran, even though the Siege Veteran has a second ability and it starts with an extra power. Just the fact that it costs one more mana is... Probably enough of a downgrade. You shouldn't be interested in it. Uh, well, you wouldn't be interested in it if you were choosing between the Aspirant and the Siege Veteran. The, 
the aspirant is a human cleric. It's not a soldier, so it doesn't go with the soldier theme. And like you obviously wouldn't play Siege Veteran in a deck where you were playing non-soldiers, because a big part of the card is the second ability that when you know non-token soldiers die, you get a soldier token. Uh, for collected companies, every time you build one of these decks in Explorer, the appeal to put collected company in the deck is pretty strong, but I don't know, it somehow it never really seems to quite be good enough. So maybe that was a mistake in deck building. I'm going to continue to try it like this. And then going on to the lands, Fortified Beachhead is, it's a bit of an appeal to play soldiers. Like if you look at my lands, I don't have any Sea Chrome Coasts. If I wasn't playing soldiers, the, I could obviously just have Sea Chrome Coasts. This is better than Sea Chrome Coast in this deck, but not by a ton because it's so expensive to use, just not that many games are going to come down to this activated ability, I would say. Other than that, playing a three-color mana base in a deck that is trying to be low to the ground and play one drop so you don't really want to play tapped lands is actually harder than you would think in Explorer. It's not like playing a mana base in modern where you can just put fetches and shocks in your deck and you can just kind of cast whatever you want on turn one and it's going to work out fine here it is a little bit trickier so if you look i've got some botanical sanctums and a yavamaya coast just to get my green and blue sources high enough and then everything else is white lands it might be better. I wonder if there's a way. I, I don't think there's a way that I can split split these into white green and white blue lands. I want to play one planes because Field of Ruin type cards do actually get played in, Ex, in Explorer. And like I need all of these to be blue and green sources just to get enough blue and enough green sources. Even the way, with my mana base the way it is now. This is only 13 green sources for Collected Company, which is a little bit low. This deck does, if it starts working, it does draw more than one card a turn with Sky Strike Officer. So you are going to probably fix, you know, if, if you have an okay draw, you are going to get a little bit of an opportunity to draw into some stuff to fix your mana. Moving on to the sideboard. Here there is, there are actually some pretty appealing sideboard options. So I've got Dovin's Vetoes, which is obviously... It's a great sideboard card if you're playing against something like Indomitable Creativity or a like a blue-white control deck. One issue with it, though, is it doesn't stop Supreme Verdict. A lot of people are playing blue-white spirits in Explorer, and the fact that you can spell Queller Supreme Verdict is a pretty big deal. Um, I don't have... I, I mean, I could just have spell Quellers in my sideboard. I don't. Uh, I do have Siege Veterans, a... a a solution to Supreme Verdict to an extent. Uh, I've got some Spell Pierces. I think it's just generally a good card. And then I do, I've got a bunch of non sold well, I've got a bunch of Skyclave Apparitions. They're not soldiers, they're not humans, but I do think that they're really good against Cat Oven decks. Uh, and then I've got some other, I, I guess. Brutal Cathar is a human soldier, so I've got some soldiers, but I'm also just boarding in some, you know, non-soldier cards just because I think they're good cards in matchups. I have one Lagrella and two Brutal Cathars right now. I'm not really sure which one's better. Uh, Lagrella is a human soldier and Brutal Cathar is a human soldier, so there's not a tribal reason. Lagrella does have the benefit that you can sometimes exile your own thing for profit. Um, and it's a 2-3 as opposed to being a 2-2. I think it's probably worse, but I wanted to try a mix just to see if I felt like there were situations where Lagrella was actually better. So the, the main sideboard plan is against a creature deck, I'm going to board in all my Skyclave Apparitions, all my Brutal Cathars, and my Lagrella. Um, against, you know, decks where I'm not trying to interact with their creatures, they're probably going to have a lot of removal after sideboard, so I'm going to have... Extraction Specialist, Elite Spellbinder, Spell Pierces, Dovin's Vetoes. Pretty straightforward plan. To be honest, I, I didn't get that far into exact sideboarding plans with this deck yet. Sideboard's still a work in progress. So let's go play some games, see it in action. This deck can get some really, really good draws, but it also folds to opposing good draws, sadly.
on the draw, no. So in addition to trying this deck, I tried blue-white control. I tried a blue-black control deck, which is what I think I'm probably going to make a video on for the, the Friday play-in. Uh, I tried blue-red creativity, which I didn't really like that deck very much. I tried uh, auras. So far, I, I think I like the, my blue-black deck the best. You'll have to watch till tomorrow to see that. So this is probably a creativity deck of some kind. I didn't really like these creativity decks because unlike in Pioneer, where you can... I should have played the Thalys Lieutenant first. Unlike in Pioneer, where you have the World Spine Worm Xenagos thing, so you, Thoughtseize is not that effective against you. In Explorer, if your Locust God gets thought seized, like your deck doesn't really function very well anymore, which is a pretty big problem because thought seized is an extremely popular card. I cut myself off of blue mana because if I draw a land next turn, I want to be able to go Siege Veteran, Recruitment Officer. I guess most of my lands are. The only land where that would matter is if I draw the one Yavamaya Coast. But I did I wanna I wanna potentially have double white if I draw one more mana. I guess I can also I can draw any white two drop that isn't Denic. And then I'll be I would be able to double spell as well. Like that guy. Wow, that guy. Uh I think I'm just going to keep playing these things. I'm saving this Thalia for last because I, I want to bait as much removal out of their hand as possible because this does stop their combo from working. Oh, this isn't a creativity deck, or maybe it is. No, it's oh, it's a Magma Opus deck. Weird. It's a Magma Opus creativity deck, I guess. Are they getting gear hops? Interesting. Okay. So obviously I lose. This might be a smart way to try creativity. I don't know about playing Stern Lesson. I mean, I, I get that it makes your Power Stone, which works both with creativity and with casting the Gear Hulk, but it seems like kind of a weak card. Alright, so against this deck, I want Dovin's Vetoes, I want Spell Pierces, I think I want Extraction Specialists and Spellbinders. The Stalia works against the Locust God Sage of the Falls version of the combo. I don't think it's going to be very good against the Torrential Gear Hulk. I mean, it's okay. I'm going to leave the Sky Strike Officers in my deck just because I think it's a pretty efficient card. Definitely going to take Hardman out of my deck. I'm going to take Law Rune and Forcer out of my deck. I'm probably going to sideboard this out in basically every matchup. It's just in my deck as kind of a, a third one drop, but I think it's the worst card in my deck, so it's going to come out whenever I want something else in particular. How many creatures do I have? Still 28, so that's fine. Had to mulligan both games, which is not ideal. They probably have fiery impulse. I was completely unaware that this card got added to Arena. Please don't have make disappear. It's looking like they don't have make disappear or they're saving it for a better opportunity. I 
think I'm just going to do Evans Veto this turn lesson. The Power Stone gives them an additional mana towards being able to cast the Gear Hulk. It also fixes their hands on. Come on, collect company off the top. I've always hoped to draw a botanical sanctum. So they're going to be up to six mana. If they have a gear hulk, it's going to go badly for me. Did draw a fortified beachhead. That's not bad. Actually, it's bad. Uh, yeah. I am defeated. Man. Three mulligans in a row. Just looking for those juicy two land hands. Two or three lands. Also accept four lands, probably. So Sky Strike Officer does not make humans, which is kind of sad. With Thalia's Lieutenant, if you play the all humans version, you can play Adelines instead of Sky Strike Officers, and if you have Adeline Thalia's Lieutenant going, you, you win the game really quickly. Oh, what? I don't know if my opponent's hand is just terrible, or maybe the Thalia... Maybe they were planning on playing uh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker on turn three, and the Thalia stopped them. Could be. This is not an impressive start opponent. Ooh, maybe it is an impressive start. I see. So this is like a creativity for a Traxa deck that also has Transmogrify in it. It's kind of cool. You might be wondering, well, how am I going to win now? And I think the answer is I'm not. I need a Law Rune Enforcer to start tapping that Atraxa. Atraxa. What is this card? Careful cultivation. Okay. They have fire prophecy as a removal spell. But that doesn't let them win this combat. Of course, probably one of their unknown cards is just another Transmogrify. Ooh, there's my Law Rune Enforcer. That'll probably get hit by a Fire Prophecy, sadly, though. Oh, does this thing have Death Touch? That's the first time I've ever triple blocked it. Okay.
I'll be amazed if I win this game. I do have the Law Run Enforcer online, though. I think I messed up. I could have made it so the Law Run Enforcer was a 3-4. Would have been smart. I had played these two in the opposite order. They can't cast an Atraxa from their hand off of just the mana from the Courier's briefcase. That's good news for me. I didn't do the math before I attacked, but they were forced to block like that to not die. And the fortified beachhead pumping wouldn't have made it lethal. with what the hit another fire prophecy that's not good this other stuff's all kind of nonsense fire prophecy is a problem though They're at effectively 13 life. They block there. I might actually kill them if I find a lord. So they kill. Oh, wait, they kill this thing. still die if I find another Valiant Veteran. Were they actually dead to the fortified beachhead? Maybe they were. Maybe I'm just being, playing really bad. Mm. So they would have killed this, they would have blocked that, they would have taken four, six, I don't think they were dead. No! It's too many blockers. Please be reasonable, opponent. I can't beat all these blockers. Or can I? I don't think I can.
Spell. Fortify Beachhead. Not bad. Spoiler, it's actually pretty bad. So they're going to be up to 20, but effectively 27, because I, my deck doesn't have any way to get this thing off the board. I needed my Lawbrun Enforcer. If I sequenced it differently so this thing was big enough to live through a Fire Prophecy, maybe I would have won. We'll never know. More blockers. Does any of this matter? I guess I'll just go with the cheapest one. So they block the five biggest. One, two, three. Getting through with four creatures. I can fortify Beachhead and... It's not even close to 27 damage. I kind of knew I was dead when they transmogrified the first time. I was surprised that it actually was a little bit close. Uh, I may have misbuilt my deck by including no cards that can get rid of a creature. So I'm just going to have transmogrifies and spell pierces. I guess I'll leave the Lava Rune Enforcers in my deck, because they can technically interact with a uh, an Atraxa. Mulligan. He's back. He's ready to do some enforcing. So they gave me the option of revealing a soldier, even though I had a soldier in play. It makes sense. What? No, wait, it doesn't. This is a really good hand. I have a hunch Spell Pierce is going to be quite strong this game. I think that's worth Spell Piercing. Because I have the Law Rune Enforcer. Without the Law Rune Enforcer, it might not have actually been. I'm not that I'm not worried about them getting an Atraxa into play on their turn. And this way I don't have to worry about them like drawing into removal spells off of the, the loot part of Fable of Kiki Jiki and killing the Valiant Veterans. Because if my Valiant Veterans die, my clock becomes non existent really. Or it would have been. I didn't know I was going to draw this collected company. I think I was going to take Sky Strike Officer and Thalia. My opponent saved me from having to make that decision. Should I have Elite Spellbinder in my deck over these Thalias? Probably. I 
This deck is honestly, it's far from the worst deck I tried in Explorer. The worst deck I tried by far was Black Red Vampires with Blood Hall Priest. I love Blood Hall Priest, but it's not where it's at. I guess I would spell there's a bookcase. Is that what the card's called? A briefcase? The Courier's Briefcase. I would have spell pierced that. I'm not going to leave Spell Pierce up for Fable of the Mirror Breaker. If they have Fable of the Mirror Breaker, I'll uh, just fight through it. I need to get the, this style of deck, you need to get on the board before you start trying to leave your counters up. It's unfortunate, for sure, that they got to resolve Fable of the Mirror Breaker, but game's not over. Slobbering Enforcer. Uh, I think I'm just gonna relax and play Collected Company. Unless they force me to Dilvin's Veto. Don't threaten me with a good time. Okay, good. They didn't have a second Transmogrify. They, they have to have creativities in their deck, too, right? There's no way they're just playing Transmogrifies. Maybe should have done that in the draw step in case I hit Elite Spellbinder. Is the Gigantha going right back out of their hand? They just got it in their hand. Why do they have the World Tree in their deck? That one's a bit of a mystery. Dennis. Dennis did his job, though. It's rough out here for that Gigantha. Sure. I'll reveal that guy. There's no reason to attack with the Thalia's Lieutenant. They can just make a Goblin to jump with. Lawrence Enforcer is ready to be enforcing the law. Oh, Gigantha. It's living large. Okay, they, tr they chumped with their only non-legendary, so now the Reflection of Kiki Jiki doesn't have any targets. But now it has a briefcase that it can target, or a briefcase guy. Whoa! That's a combo. I wonder if they have sweepers in their deck. They don't have sweepers. It's going to be really hard for them to beat Double Law Rune Enforcer. Extinction event. They do have sweepers. Come on with Odd. I very smartly had a broad distribution. They're going to be forced to chump, though.
They're no longer forced to jump. Am I gonna lose this game? I guess the World Tree means they can just cast a Traxa once they get to seven lands. That's something. Is this thing a soldier on the backside? It is. Oh, the World Tree also allows them to crack their briefcases. So they're already forced to block. I do lose to a top decked tracks. Uh, I think I'm actually going to hold this Thalia. So I don't lose to. Like, if they top deck Brotherhood's end there, it's pretty bad for me. If I'd lost a top deck to Traxa with the World Tree, that would have been sweet. Finally, a hand where I don't have to mulligan. Probably a matchup where Thalia is not very good, though. This might just be like blue white spirits. It's looking more and more like blue white spirits. As the game progresses, I'm beginning to sense it might be blue white spirits. I hope they don't have a spell queller. What's the plan if they have spell queller? It's not spell queller, so that was fine. And it also means they they would have cast spell queller there if they had it. I, I'm almost a hundred percent sure. So it's looking like they don't have spell queller unless they just drew it. I think I'm going to save the Harbin to be the last card I cast, probably. I'm certainly not interested in blocking Rattle Chains with it. Are they interested in blocking? They drew a Supreme Phantom. It's kind of bad for me. I'm going to be a coward. And only attack with Dennis. Get him, Dennis. Get him. I think I'll actually just choose to use Recruitment Officer rather than play a Harbin that probably wouldn't be getting into combat. I've played against this Blue White Spirits deck a lot. It seems to be very popular on the ladder. That's a good one. So now if they flash in a Supreme Phantom, it doesn't help them that much. If they flashed in multiple ones, it would help them. I don't know if I'm going to need it, but this is actually a game. This is a spot where Fortified Beachhead is pretty threatening. I'm definitely not going to need it if this is what they're doing. I guess they can tap the Harbin, so Harbin can't trigger, but... 
they need a lot more than that going on. Here I come. It's a fortified beachhead. So this is a matchup where I think I want my Skyclave Apparitions, my Ligrella, and my Brutal Cathars. Do I want Law Rune Enforcer? I think all the Tapter stuff actually might be kind of nice. Definitely don't need Thalia's. And I guess I'm taking out Th other Thalia just because I need to cut some three mana cards. Maybe I'll cut a Dennis as well. Siege Veteran's good if it gets to sit and play, it's just... Am I going to get to that point? I don't know, let's find out. I'm not going to, I'm not trying to fight against, like, their Geistlet Snare or any of that kind of stuff. That's why I'm not going to have Spell Pierce and not going to have Thalia. They're going to have more spells in their deck than I am, but I, I think that I just want creatures. Hey, it's Dennis. If they have a spell coiler next turn. It's going to get ugly. If they have a spectral sailor. It's not really going to affect in any way how ugly it is. But Dennis in a hole? Can we show Dennis a little bit more respect, please? Really, they're not racing me? Man, I'm getting screwed out of my counters. So the Moon Rage Brute's gonna flip again. I'm gonna eat. I guess I'll eat the Spell Queller. Hopefully they don't have rattled chains. I guess I'm not, I'm not even dead by brick here. There are things I could draw that would kill them. There's also things that are just generally good. Let's do one more match. Double Dennis, I mean, sort of quadruple Dennis, because Dennis is duplicated just on his own. Whoa, that's a whiff. This might be Grease Fang, like Green Black Land into Duress Game 1, I think is frequently Grease Fang. Maybe not. Yeah, it's 
Hey, it is Grease Fang. Grease Fang lands. Alright, I'm going to... Get Sky Strike Officer out first. So I can start getting some card drawing value. Then I'll get Th I'll get Thalia down next turn. They're gonna, I think, struggle to have enough removal in their main deck to break out of these annoying things. I guess they could just beat me to death with the Seekers Chariot. Do I want to block Grease Fang? I don't think so. gonna let the chariot hit me this turn. I guess I could chump it with Dennis. Maybe not. They're worried about me cracking back, but I think if they they don't feel comfortable attacking in that spot, they're all hope for them is lost. There's not a whole lot of point in it attacking and trading with the Asika's Chariot, it's just going to come back and give them more cats. Okay. That went pretty well. Is there anything I should sideboard in this matchup? Siege Veteran seems pretty lackluster. I think I'm just going to board and spell pierces over it. Lauren Enforcer is actually potentially good in this matchup too. You can tap Parker Lee in number two. The turn it comes back and gets crewed. I need to top deck Dennis. Come on, Dennis. You're not Dennis, you're actually a pretty good card though. If they have the perfect hand, they're going to kill me. Like if they go Refrain's Informant, discard Barhelian number two, or I guess they can also mill Barhelian number two. Now if they have a Grease Fang in their hand, I'm basically dead. And, oh, I meant to play the other Thalia. Mistakes were made. Okay. They have two Barhelian number twos. So they have a lot of creatures in their deck. It's kind of weird. Hmm. They would have played Grease Fang last turn if they had it. So, I think I'm safe doing... I'm going to give them a one turn window to have Grease Fang. 
And in exchange, I get this Thalia in play, which potentially slows them down. And next turn, I'll be able to play this Thalia to go with the La Rune Enforcer. And I think they're going to have a very hard time getting out of it at that point. So they had this Knight of Autumn in their deck, I'm sure, because they thought I might have... What's it called? Rest in peace. It's, it looks weird here. You know, from my side of the table, I don't have anything that Knight of Autumn hits, so it's, it's not helping them. But I'm sure from their perspective, they were thinking, what if I have rest in peace? Realistically, I probably should have rest in peace on my sideboard, but I'm like one step ahead of my opponent, or maybe one step behind them. All right, so that's the deck. I went, I guess, three and one in matches, and I don't think the deck's particularly good, but, you know, it, it, it does some powerful things, at least. So... I don't know if I... The sideboard could maybe be a little bit more dialed in. Like, I probably should have one or two rest in pieces. I was actually kind of impressed by how this Thalia played in the Grease Fang matchup, and also against that Blue White Spirits deck. I think I took it out of my deck, but it was nice in game one. Like, I... It's worse for sure than Brutal Cathar type cards, but it was it was kind of nice as a just all around decent card. And Law Enforcer was better than I thought it was, or better than I thought it was going to be. There was actually a couple matchups where I was I was happy to have it in my deck, which surprised me. For people who stuck around, if you haven't already, please sub to my channel. And like the video, leave a comment. This is the deck I'm planning to play tomorrow in the qualifiers, and I'll make it a, a, a video. But this is a special spoiler for people who watch to the end. So sub to the channel, and you'll get to see a video on this deck tomorrow in the actual Friday plan. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.